Hello everyone, welcome to Allie's Advocacy for TBI survivors. First off, the noise in the background, if you're one of them, it's my husband, he got home from work and he's watching All in the Family, the reruns. And then I've got the TV up front on the Food Network. I'm obsessed with that show, the channel. And I think I'm watching guys the uh, diners, drive-ins, and the one with Guy Frary. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today, I'm going to have two um, emails to read to you from state rep. One's from State Representative Trish Ranson, the other's from State Representative John Talley, and then um, going to kind of just lay off on legislation, you know, drafting the whole bit. I still have the legislation I was working on last year. I haven't finished and everything. Um, and then I will um, start talking about some recreation activities that you can do that are really helpful with managing like, well, at least, okay, I'm biased because they at least help me with my migraines my muscle spasms and keeping everything calm. So first we will read the email I have from Representative Franson. Hi friend, after two months, we're basically halfway through the 2024 legislation, legislative session, what we've accomplished so far. All bills that have made their way through their chamber of origin has so far, or have done. So we've now handed off our bills to the opposite chamber and the process begins again with hearing bills in committee. I passed two bills from the house floor. Both bills have to do with child care subsidy. How HB just from subsidy payment program from attendance based to enrollment based. HB 53 or HB 3530 directs the Department of Human Services to provide a 75% subsidy rate to low income families who qualify, as well as a cap parent copay at 7% of household income. Both bills align our child care subsidy system with the new federal child care block grant requirements. I'm proud of the many conversations I've had with child care stakeholders, including my colleagues across the aisle. While solidifying the child care subsidy program isn't the silver bullet to fill, fix our child care crisis, it is an integral piece to the puzzle. I took some time to relate re uh, Rest and relax over spring break. Now my sights are set for reading, questioning, and debating Senate bills. The Senate threw in a new budget-making process this year. So not sure how the overall budget process will look with these changes. Here's to keeping good bills alive, furthering those bipartisan conversations, and questioning the heck out of bad bills. Note. Next week is candidate filing for the 2024 election season. I'm happy to say that I'm officially filing for re-election on Wednesday, April 3rd. I appreciate your continued support. I can't do this without you. Sincerely, Trish. P.S. Our end of quarter fundraising deadline is March 31st. Please consider do donating before our deadline to ensure a strong showing before filing. And I believe I said um, in a previous video, State Representative Ransom is going to be the only candidate that I campaign for. I've got I've got a second winning to play for. It's going to be 
my husband and I's second wedding. We're going to do a vow renewal in the fall. And then my best friend from college. Um, oh, gosh, can't see. Me. My, be uh, my best friend from college has asked me to be her matron of honor. So, yeah, I got three big things. Okay, let's go see. Yeah. And here's the one from State Representative John Talley. After our mid March deadline to pass House bills through the House chamber, we've officially swapped bills with the Senate. This is done through a process called engrossing, and it's the formal step taken to officially move a bill between chambers. After a bill is engrossed to the opposite chamber, it is first read on the floor, meaning it's acknowledged that we've received it. When a bill is second read on the floor, it can be assigned to a committee and be heard there. Now that bills have been assigned to a committee, those committee meetings started up this week. However, it was still a pretty quiet week since House staff was still doing the behind the scenes work to process the hundreds of Senate bills we received. One, uh, one very exciting part of the week was having the opportunity to honor George Schaefer, who lives in House District 33, as our veteran of the week in the House of Representatives. George overcame a lot, lot of hardship in his younger years and joined the United States Army when he was 19. He completed both basic training and advanced individual training, or AIT, at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, where he graduated at the top of at the, in the top 10% of his AIT class. George was selected for five weeks of chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive recon school at Fort Leonard Woods. Or Fort Leonard Wood. He was later assigned to his first duty station in Fort. Polk, Louisiana, with 51st Chemical Company, the only CBRNE reconnaissance company in the entire U.S. Army at the time. On 9-11, George was part of the Quick Reaction Force under the 18th Airborne Corps, and he deployed overseas to Kuwait, where he was a nuclear, biological, and chemical reconnaissance team leader. Later, George graduated from Liberty University. He is now in seminary at Regent University and serves as chaplain at the American Legion Post in American Legion Post 58 in Guthrie, where he lives with his wife, Meredith. The oldest of his four children is carrying on, carrying on his legacy by serving with the Air National Guard and is currently on deployment. I was honored to visit with George and his wife, and I appreciate Representative Colin Dool from Guthrie joining me in recognizing them. A group from the American Legion came to show their support, along with Guthrie Mayor Steve Gently and City Manager Eddie Faulkner. We were also joined by Guthrie Tourism Director Justin Fortney, who was at the State Capitol on Monday for Oklahoma Film and Music Day. Guthrie's historic downtown area has been used as a movie setting for many movies and television shows, and Oklahoma's film and music industries have become major economic drivers for the state. Before I close out this week's column, I want to share some information about the service Oklahoma location in Stillwater. The 701 East 12th Avenue location is now open on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. as well as 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday weekdays. If you need any licensing or drive test, you can learn more about learn more information about the services each service Oklahoma location officer offers at service.ok.gov. Additionally, you can take advantage of their online check-in system to help streamline the process and make it easier, a little easier for everyone. As committees kick off 
in earnest, please feel free to reach out to me to discuss any bills or questions I may be able to help with. Okay, I'm going to put the house website. And that's where you can go to find State Representative Trish Ranson or State Representative John Talley. Thank you for the honor of representing State District 33 at the State Capitol. Representative John Talley. And he is Committee Chair for the Children, Youth, and Family Services. Sorry for it being so dark. I'm losing a light. And I've not been able to get anyone to fix it for my husband or dad when he comes up. Okay, what I showed, I don't have my two finished projects with me because they're up in the front room. I think I barely had it started Wednesday when I started this. But I showed the two finished projects I had for my um, two youngest nieces on my side of the family. And I'm not going to say what this is going to be, but I'm started on my eldest niece's birthday. And then her girl. The two youngest were in March, so I'll be giving them their birthday presents. Even though their birthdays have gone past, I'll be giving it to them um, on Easter. And I'm working on the ones that, the one that's in April right now. And then my um, niece from, oh, my husband's side, she has her birthdays until November. But um, she has two kids. She has a little boy whose birthday's in April, and then a little girl whose birthday's in June. And so, what I am doing is, um, and I'm going to have to start doing, re doing researching on the Mayan tribe again. Um, like I was for their Christmas presents that I did for the kids and then that I did for my niece and her husband. I painted them stuff that was representative of the Mayan tribe and everything and or best of my ability anyways. And um, so I'm going to crochet something it's going to be, essentially, it's going to be a basket. Like, I don't know how big I'll make it or exactly how to make it look like. I've got to go browse around and find some artwork for the Mayan nation. If I can find some and try to make some stuff that, something that is representative of it and honors the tribe. And to send to my cute little nephew. So, but you can crochet is something that you can do, and it helps keep you calm. And it really helps with migraines and everything, or playing sports, um, painting. Um, doing making crafts. Let's see what else did I used to do? Oh, cr knitting. Well, I haven't, I haven't learned how to knit yet. 
um, cross stitching. Yeah, cross stitching. Um, which I haven't done in forever. So yeah, I think I played, said play sports. Hanging out with, just hanging out with friends and talking to them. Um, playing games, whether that be online with friends or just playing it solo. Playing card games. Because I used to watch my grandmother play solitaire all the time, and now I'm addicted to playing solitaire online. It's so much fun. So, but those, or if you like to um, paint t shirts like paint designs on t-shirts and everything. Sorry if I'm not talking a lot. I'm trying to get this. Um, let's see, what is this? Making jewelry. Because that was something my cousin used to do a lot when we were younger. Because um, I think that was one one of the things that our grandmother taught us how to do, besides teaching us how to crochet, paint, um, do a lot of other stuff. And she started trying teaching us from the since the time we were in like elementary and everything. If you like reading, writing, like writing poetry, writing stories, stuff. Darn, it's gonna be messed up. So I got to figure out how to get, because there's like this end and then it's like on the opposite end down here. So I've got to go up front where there's better lighting to figure this out and everything. And everything. So I can finally get it into the shape and start getting better crocheted because this is going to be the last time. You guys see me crocheting because I do not want my niece to come on YouTube and see what I'm making her. So I hope you guys have a good one.